All right, so let's whip this baby apart and see what's inside. Like, I don't exactly know, I have never played this rock band thing, so I don't know, like, if, um, you know, what type of sensor they got on the string, whether they have, like, a vibration sensor and, it's, you know, if you put the right amount of vibration or, or whatever, or whether or not it's just a, yeah, you actually strummed that particular string or something like that. So I'm not sure what uh, mechanism is there but yeah we've got like 126 buttons inside this puppy as well so we'll open that up and um i'm not sure what's in the end something hmm not sure what they do anyway no idea let's crack it open and this is the Fender Wireless Stratocaster guitar controller. And the game itself was developed by a company called Harmonix, but this actual controller itself was actually uh, designed and built by Mad Cats, who designed controllers and other sorts of things for the game industry. So they're the ones responsible for this puppy. Made in China, of course. Hmm. So I've taken the screws out of this puppy. I'm not sure what uh, that metal plate on there does, but anyway, let's... Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit how you're doing inside with all the cabling, but, uh, yeah. Now, this has got prototype construction written all over it, um, and they didn't really optimise it for production at all. They just sort of, they just whacked it into, into production with the, with the demonstrator. You know, the handmade demonstrator prototype. I mean, check that out. Look, they've got this cable bodged onto and like an extension wire there and it just soldered onto there. What a complete bodge that is. And it's all sort of, you know, modular. They've used like existing off the shelf boards, kind of what you'd expect. Although they've gone for chip on board here for these two. So maybe their uh, development uh, version, they had the uh, quad flat packs and maybe for production. They went for uh, the chip on board to save a few bucks, but you know it all looks it all looks very prototypey put together. Very interesting. There's absolutely nothing under that plate at all, except a couple of more hidden screws. Hmm. And that's the connector interface, which goes off to your stem there. And it looks like what they're doing is just using that as a as well. I thought it was like a stiffener plate. But it's actually, it's just ABS plastic. It even says so. Look, ABS. So, like, I thought, yeah, maybe stiffen a plate. I don't, they just put it there to look fancy. I don't see what purpose that serves, really. <coughs> Sorry, it's upside down. I know all the electrons will fall out, but uh, yeah, I can't, couldn't get my camera over otherwise. Um, no surprises for guessing that we've got an Xbox custom branded chip here obviously they don't spin their own silicon they're subcontracted out but yeah they're using their own uh you know proprietary 2.4 gig uh controller there so not wi-fi not bluetooth it's yeah xboxy and by the way yes you can still save a couple of cents by going single sided boards so that's why these uh, button interface boards, all they got is, you know, just the buttons on the front which press down. You don't need a double-sided board for that. You can save a couple of cents. So they spun all these, one, two, three, four, five different boards, little single-sided connector interface boards. There's probably another one in here for the uh, uh, stem connector as well. Now the only real thing of interest inside here is the uh, pickup for these individual strings. As you can see, they've got this connector board on top. All it is, is just that. Just that. It actually takes this little, not even really twisted uh, pair here from the uh, pickup sensor for each one of the strings and just connects that through to a much more robust uh, board to board inner connect there. So they've got something in here. They've got some spring in there to like dampen the thing, obviously, something like that. That looks like hot snot to me, so uh, like still more like classic. They built this thing as the, uh, just the prototype to show the investors whatever. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, let's just do a fancy molded case and uh, who cares about optimizing production for this sort of stuff. We can just, you know, somebody in China can just put hot snot in there just like you did in the prototype. No worries. So if I give that string a burl here, here we go. And you can just see it giving a little bit of a wiggle there. So, yeah, I suspect like the spring is just yeah, some sort of vibration dampening thing would be my guess. And I've removed the hot snot off the end of 
there and you can see that's just the part of the metal uh, clip which just bends up so they're just stopping that metal clip from falling out so the sensors um yeah it looks like it's embedded under the spring so let's take the uh, spring out and see what we can see so it's most likely going to be some sort of piezo ceramic transducer let's uh, this is all it's all stuck in place sorry here we go yeah there we go ah uh, look yep yeah piezo ceramic transducer on each one of those strings just stuck in there yeah stuck onto the plastic um plate which just you know uh vibrates back and forth when you when you strum that string it's just a twang so that was completely predictable those things are cheap and easy exactly what you need to do the business another thing which is uh entirely predictable yeah spared no expense on the front end here lm324s there we go that's all she doing maybe you got some diode clamp in there have we to uh clamp the um la any larger excursions but uh yep they're just doing some amplification there that'd be going straight into whatever micro is being used over here chip on board yeah we've got no chance of figuring out what that is and actually i can't even see like a a JTAG interface port around that either. I would have uh, would have expected that somewhere on the board, but uh, no, I can't see it. So who knows? Maybe they've um, uh, well, I wouldn't like to think they've spun a custom silicon for doing that. I'd still like to think it's some sort of uh, programmable micro. But yeah, who knows? But, uh, they've got that second chip on board under there and that's just got to be like a little 8-bit micro surely just hand it looks like that just handles like the um interface so it's it's handling the inner for this big cable here that one goes off to the um uh the main button uh interface so all this sort of stuff around here all handling uh the buttons this one up here this cable up here is handling is going off to the uh, stem, so it's uh, talking via some sort of serial protocol off to uh, the stem. Some sort of, there's got to be a micro in that stem. You can't uh, multiplex 126 or whatever uh, buttons on the stem through that many wires. So, yeah, let's crack that open now. So let's look at the stem. Apparently 102 buttons. I haven't counted them myself, but that's what uh, Rom, who sent this in, says. I'll take his word for it. And, yeah, you can play it in some expert mode or something where you can actually... Um, yeah, press all the individual buttons actually matter, apparently. So as I said, yeah, they can't multiplex that through the six-line cable or whatever they uh, had before. So it's most likely to be just a little uh, board in there with a uh, micro that uh, handles all that and just, you know, I squared C or, or something or SPI or whatever coming out to connect it uh, through to the main processor. Let's check it out. Here we go. Let's lift the skirt and... Hey, we're in like Flynn. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, chip on board on a daughter board. That's interesting. That shows you that they've uh, uh, bodged that once again, maybe bodged that from uh, prototype into production cheaply. We've got uh, diode on each one, and then we've got some uh, diode steering there, perhaps. So there you go, there's an interesting daughter board, once again chip on board to lower the cost, absolute bare bones, even when they had to do a daughter board like this and use that as a surface mount adapter to convert it into this LCC PLCC package here. So, you know, they probably use like that PLCC socket during uh, development and stuff like that. And, well, of course, you know, too expensive to go into production, so they just get the bare die and then they just blob it in production and do the um, do the adapter board like that. And of course, uh, you could work out what uh, micro that is. They've thoughtfully labeled all that. So P0, you know, port 0 0.1. And if you know your micros, I don't know. I don't know that one offhand, but you know, is it a Freescale? Is it, is it a Renesis? Is it a TI? Whatever, you know, somebody will no doubt tell us in the comments exactly what it is they'll go oh yeah I, I know that pin out off the top of my head and it might look like there's a couple of screws missing here but they actually line up with the ones on the uh, back of the case there so they're the ones that are screwed through externally into there there's just uh, three screws holding down this main board almost can't fit this on the widescreen here and but that is a buttload 
of membrane switches. There we go. They just got the membrane. They've actually got those, uh, you saw them on the other side, they've actually got little uh, plastic uh, pull-through things that actually hold these membranes in place there. So, yeah, they're all just rubber membranes. None of this tactile dome rubbish. Oh, no, it costs way too much for tactile domes. So, yeah. Um, it, interesting, like, these bigger ones actually have two just in case because when you've got a long uh, plunger like that, if you hit this end and you've only got the, um, you know, if you hit this end of the button and you've only got the one in the center, it may not, one single contact in the center, it may not actually make uh, contact. So each one of those, even for the smaller ones over here, they've just used two membranes. So, you know, regardless of which side of the button or the middle, you know, you're sort of more guaranteed to get that uh, key press. And I'll lift the skirt on that for those playing along at home. There we go. And it looks like they've got a couple of metal contacts going up to this stem up here. I don't know what this does. Is this some sort of capacitive touch thing? Oh, actually, that does absolutely nothing. They're just like um, strengthener bars for the end. I guess, you know, you've got people you know, thrashing this damn thing, trying to kill this Xbox game. And, you know, yeah, you don't want to kill your genuine Stratocaster <coughs> guitar. So, yep, that's just entirely decorative. Does absolutely nothing nothing just it's just a plastic bloody doorstop it's all it really is and just a bit of a strengthening plate to hold the two cheap ass plastic bits together Meh. and i didn't see that little sucker hiding under there that looks like an electric mic um insert looks like there we go so what does that get i don't know tapping on the guitar i don't know i don't know how to play this bloody rock band thing i'm too old, apparently. And of course it's all FCC compliant and all that sort of jazz, but you just can't help but think that uh, all of this sort of construction with all these cables flapping around in the breeze and stuff, that eh, it's not the best, um, you know, low EMC design possible. So yeah, I don't know. I guess they did enough tweaking to pass. So let's just probe this on the scope here and see what we can see. First of all, we'll actually probe straight off the uh, piezo transducer there. So see what signal level we get, see what it looks like. So I'll set that five millivolts per division. I'll set my trigger level about there. We'll single shot capture that and let me strum the string. Ta-da, look at that. We've got uh, all sorts of chaotic uh, behavior up here, but then you can really see it start to resonate after like, uh, what are we, 20 milliseconds per division, 40, 50 milliseconds there. It, you know, we start to get a the, the resonant vibration of the uh, string and the mode, and it's like actually a fairly constant amplitude there, which is interesting. I don't know the dynamics of guitar strings and things like that, but that'd be like, you know, properties of the, st the, uh, the, the plastic in there, the, you know, the dynamic modal properties of the plastic arm and all that sort of stuff. And then we've got some decay, and then we're, it's still happening and going off there, but that's, there you go, for all you... Uh, guitar pickup aficionados. I mean, this is like, yeah, <laughs> bloody piezo-ceramic transducer worth, you know, two cents slapped onto a bit of plastic with a plastic string. Hmm. Yeah, sacrilege. Okay, what I've got is the pickup on channel A here, and on channel B I've actually got the um, output of the LM324 that that one's going into, so it, it sort of just uh, kind of, you know, takes the major peaks there and gives some outputs and and you know there's none of this resonant stuff in there at all so yeah it's just it's not quite squaring it up so it's doing something there clearly they don't want um to just you know they haven't completely squared the damn thing up so I'm not sure what the go is they're obviously just getting more than just you you plucked a string they're getting more information than that but uh, to what end and how? I don't know. So that's about all she wrote on the Rock Band 3 guitar Stratocaster thingy-mabob. So there you go. It's like, I yeah, can't believe how sort of like just regular sort of um, prototyping this thing is. I mean, you know, the outside molds and everything are really uh, quite good. But internal appearance, this is something, you know, looks like something you'd uh, slap together 
just as a prototype. The investors go, we were, we've we got this idea for this rock band. Can you design us a guitar thing? And, you know, you'd whack something like this together. And, yeah, they've done a bit more work on the outside moulds and things. But, yeah, it's all just sort of slapped together like that. But, you know, they. But can, I don't know what sort of volumes these would have sold out. But they, what did they sell? It was a popular game, wasn't it? Well, they, they might have sold, you know, a million of these damn things. So you thought they might have optimised it a bit better, but hey, you know, labour's cheap in China, or it was. So yeah, I'm not sure how old this thing is actually, but yeah, sometimes you just don't have to optimise these things for production. You just go, well, yeah, bugger it, <laughs> just produce it, come on, thank you very much, we've got our moulds, let's go. So thank you very much to Rom for sending that in to the mailbag segment. It's an interesting look at, you know, a mass-produced consumer game guitar <laughs> fascinating but you know it's pretty bare bones stuff just a piezoelectric um element down there costs bugger all it costs more to wire up the element than it does to you know buy the um transducer on there crazy so i hope you like that little mini teardown if you did please give it a big thumbs up if you want to discuss it jump on over to the ev blog forum links down below catch you next time